Hi everybody, this is uh, Dr. Marawala. Uh, I'm a professor in physiology at uh, Chabot College in Hayward and at Samuel Merritt University in Oakland. And I'm here to talk to you about drawing a simple triangle, uh, an equilateral triangle upside down, and then put the labels on it that would qualify it as Eindhoven's triangle, which we can then use to graph the ventricular axis deviation and measure the angle of that deviation. We start with um, some very basic tools. This is a engineer's ruler which has the graph markings on it, the reticulum for uh, quickly marking perpendicular lines which are needed. Here's a graph writer which the only difference between that and a mechanical pencil is the added sleeve on it which then allows us to create a um, perfectly good line um, without the smear that would be caused by the graphite against the uh, ruler. And of course, last but not least, a compass, which makes it very easy to draw an equilateral triangle. The first thing we're going to do is roughly estimate where the triangle is going to be. It's going to be about here. So we should start in this case 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 or so lines down. And then you want, don't want to make too small a triangle and too huge a triangle. So you don't want to make one that's bigger than the compass can stretch out to. So here's 5 squares. Here's 10 squares. So let's just take double that and let's make it 20 squares. So we're going to go from here to here and just simply double it. So that will put us right about here. Okay. Now that we've got 20 squares, we already have a midpoint. We can take those 20 squares and simply draw the third point by using those 20 squares on our compass, going to each end point of that first line and cutting two arcs, which would now give us the third point of this upside down equilateral triangle. So with just a little bit of care, we try to draw as straight a line as we can, going from point to point, and in this manner, get ourselves the equilateral triangle that we need to make Eindhoven's triangle. Now, at this point, we've got the midpoint for this particular side, but we need the midpoint of the other sides too, but we can't just simply count out squares because these lines are oblique. So we measure off the one side that we can measure for the, the midpoint, and then we use that measurement that's on our compass to simply mark off the points from the bottom point, and there we go. We now have the midpoint for the other two sides. According to geometry, if you just simply connect the midpoint of a side to the opposite angle, the vertex, you will divide the triangle into two equal parts. You will even create a perpendicular line uh, from the side that you started, and you end up bisecting the 60 degree angle into two 30 degree angles. What's more is when you take all the three bisectors of the respective sides, you should see that they all come to a point right in the center of the triangle, which basically marks the um, center of gravity, as it were, of that triangle. So even though I'm doing this fairly rapidly, you can see that you pretty much have an exact center of that triangle. If I made this triangle out of uh, metal, I could actually balance it on the tip of my finger. Now, having done this, we will mark off the right arm and the left arm and the left leg, which would be the skin electrodes for a um, three lead or a six lead ECG. Uh, in our discussions, we'll later on be talking about only the three lead ECG. So I got right arm, left arm, left leg. The lead tracings would be lead one, lead two, and lead three. And since these are bipolar leads, I like to tell my students that you think of them as being 
the eye of the machine looking at the heart from three different positions. So in the center, what we've got is the isoelectric points. The bipolar leads have to have, by definition, a negative and a positive to relate to. So the right arm is always negative, no matter what. The left leg is always positive, no matter what. So that just leaves you with the left arm. You've got to know that it's positive in lead 1 because right arm is already negative, and left arm is negative in lead 3 because the left leg is already positive. Now, you may ask what happened to the right leg. Well, in your newer um, standard ECGs, you'll see that the right leg is actually ground. It's a dedicated ground, which is noted by three lines that get progressively shorter. Um, and you would say right leg. Now, you don't need to do this. This is optional to, um, to show this. You don't need to show the eyes either. That's, I'm just doing that for demonstration value. Uh, I'm going to title this Eindhoven's Triangle. And using the Eindhoven's Triangle now, you can proceed with marking the, the R wave heights for lead 1, lead 2, and lead 3.